everyone. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. This book, there's a lot to say, but it's like, I just finished the book, so it's like, I don't even know what to say. Like, I'm speechless. I'm mad, I'm angry, I'm excited for the next book. I'm excited to read A Shadow and Ember, which I have not done yet, I know. I know. If you are watching this video and you have yet to read From Blood and Ash or the third book, um, you know, do it. Do it for yourself. Do it for the peace in your heart, knowing that you have read a really great series and that you are going to be along for a really, really epic ride because this series is only halfway over and we have other books that take place in the past and that just really rocks my world. So I'm, I'm excited and, you know, go read this because I'm going to just jump into spoilers right now because I need someone to talk about this book with because the stuff that happened at the end of this book, let's just talk about it. First off, Castile, Castile's gone. Castile has been taken by the Blood Queen and I am pissed. Castile actually made me like really frustrated and annoyed a lot in this book. Like not in like a bad way. There was like moments where I was just like, Castile, can you please think with your brain? The fact that he was captured by the Blood Queen. Like, oh, like what do you, like, oh my God. Oh my God. Like, how are we going to get him out? And like, oh, okay. I'm getting off topic because like all, all like tons of things are just like ramming inside my brain that I want to talk about. So there's two names that like really confuse me in this book and that's Malik and then there's Malik. Um, I feel like this one is like Malik. I don't know. Honestly, I should probably have looked that up before I started this video, but I didn't. So when I say Malik, know that I'm talking about freaking Nikto's son. And then when I'm talking about Malik, we're talking about Trader Prince. Or, you know, I don't know. There's something about him, but we'll get back to that later. The beginning of this book and the ending of this book was just absolutely insane. Like, just like so much stuff was packed into this one book. I feel like I read two books. I really do. Poppy was captured by Alistair. You know, from the beginning, we, I think we all knew that he was just bad news. Like, obviously. We all called it. He's just babbling and babbling and babbling. Like, honestly, this dude, I just, I'm glad he's gone. <laughs> like, so glad. Jansen was pretending to be Little Beckett, luring poppy to the statue trying to kill her like all this stuff it's just it was just wrong like beckett was like a child and alistair was like we did this for the right reasons there was no other way we could have done it alistair's a pure evil and we all knew it that showdown when castile finally got there and they were all fighting and stuff and it was like we barely had time for a reunion poppy like freaking almost died oh my gosh that part i'm um, chapter seven chapter seven guys a part of myself like i was like devastated because i was like oh crap like she's She's, she dead. But then a part of me also was like, we all knew she wasn't gonna die because this is the beginning of this book. She's the main character in this entire series. There's six books, so she's not gonna die. But Castile, the crazy love man that he is, just cannot let her go, which I'm happy, but he ascended her. Basically turning her into a vampire, but like not really because it didn't really work. I mean, she woke up and she was blood hungry, but like she doesn't really need blood anymore, but it's because she's a god. Literally a god. Because she is a descendant of Nyctos. She is his granddaughter. I feel like I called that. I feel like in like a past video I called that saying like may I thought she might have been a god or something. I called that. And since she is like ascendant and all this stuff has happened she has this connection with all the woven. She can like connect with them and speak thoughts to them which I just think is freaking cool. It's just like every other Wattpad book that I used to read when I was in middle school where like the pack you know they could like talk to each other with their brains which i thought was cool i one thing i, I love about this book and this series is that jennifer has like created such a like a really amazing and awesome twist to like the whole werewolf and like vampire thing like it's so awesome like the way she has changed it up and like the woven are they're basically werewolves in my opinion the vampires have to ascend like there's so many cool things in this world and there was a lot of world building going on in this book which i really enjoyed getting to know more about like the history and everything one thing that i was really excited to know about poppy i wanted to know about her ancestry because there was there's just like we need to know like what is going on with her life and like who her grandparents are who her bro parents are. There was so much confusion in this book alone. She thought like Malik was like actually her grandfather. No, 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 no. But then we switched it up and we were like, no, actually Malik is actually her dad. And I remember like when I read this part, I was like, there's no way this guy is her dad because it just seems too easy. You know, it just seems we've accepted it too easy. Like I, I've heard so much about this dude and I just, 
I don't know, it just seems too easy to me that her dad would be Malik. We also learned a lot about Niktos and his consort, which I'm so excited. Oh my god, I'm so excited to read A Shadow and Ember because I've been holding myself back. And the fact that I finished this now so I can go ahead and go order that book just makes me so happy inside. My book lover heart is soaring. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, Niktos and his consort. So his consort... I don't really know what that word means. I'm gonna look it up later. I'm thinking it means like either like his mistress or like his wife or his like god woman wife. Like his queen. His queen is definitely gonna be the main character in the past books which I'm so excited that Jennifer's doing these past books because there's something so special about books like that that like connect together. I'm so happy that we're learning so much more about Niktos and his consort which I think her name is Sarah in the books. We are seeing like little glimpses of her in this book because like Poppy I think in the last book too she had like visions of this like silver haired kind of blonde girl talking to her and telling her all these things and she'll get flashes of this girl talking to her or just flashes of the girl just talking in general and we all know like this is the girl this is the consort that's who she is I know it is I can't wait for that girl to wake up but I just cannot wait because even Niktos when we freaking met him in this book looked at Poppy and was like you were so much like her she will be happy to know that you were so much like her and that's who he's talking about that is who he's talking about because that is his descendant that's his granddaughter and I wonder if he knows like you're my granddaughter I'm sure he knows he's a freaking god he's the king of the gods I don't know it was like the way he was talking to her it was like he had a fondness for her but there was also a level of like detachment you know and you would think like I don't know because like I have my grandparents you know I love my grandparents my grandparents love me so I would just think that like he would have like a level of like love for her and like wanting to like talk to her and like get to know her a little bit because like obviously he's been asleep for like a really long time so he hasn't gotten to have any like human connections especially with his family let's talk about how Willa Miss Willa is in this book Willamina I just love that I love that we got to meet her and I love that it was so awkward. It was awkward in the best possible way. Because, you know, like, Poppy and Castile, like, literally use her diary and read it. And while they're, you know, loving it up. There was a part in this book where Willa was like, I'll go over any, any questions that you have, any chapter. And it's just like, oh my god, she knows that. Poppy has read this freaking book. She's cool. Like she knows everybody. She's been alive for like a really long time. She is the person that we saw at the beginning of the first book um, that told Poppy to go to that one room where she met Castile, which we, we owe a lot. We owe a lot to Miss Willa. So it was just so freaking awesome to see her in this book and see her as like a main character. I love her. She's got an attitude. She's sassy. She says, she says it how it is. And I appreciate that in a character. And I would love to have more interactions with her because she is, she's so cool. Poppy's powers are just insane. They have just been growing every single book. That one scene where she literally brought back that girl from the dead. And now it makes more sense because... At the end of the book where we kind of find out that Poppy's grandfather was literally Niktos who was like, I think he said something like he was like the bringer of death. Like he doesn't, he doesn't give death, he brings death or something like that. It makes sense that she would have that power because of who her grandfather is. Let's talk about Mali. We learn about a lot about him in this book specifically because we are with Eloana, which is Castillo's mom, and she used to be married to Malik, and she used to be his queen, and you know what? There's a part of me that's so angry with her because at the very end of the book, why didn't they give us the information that Ileana was actually Isbeth? Like, and they knew this entire time. Why would you knowingly send Castillo and Poppy into this situation where they're going to meet this chick, and she's gonna give them all this information? Like, you're leading them into, like, I don't know, it was just so, like, why would you do that? Like, why not give them the entire information before they walk into it? It was dumb. It was dumb on their part, really. I also feel for her because she, it seems like, you know, okay, she's had like two husbands, right? So she's married to Valen right now, but she was married to Malik. And it just seems to me like she was really in love with Malik and that there is like a big part of her, like a big part of her that is still in love with him. It's sad because he was just like so unfaithful to her. Then Isbeth came along and he just like, was like so in love with her because like she was like his heartmate and he just could not stay away from her but I just I feel for Castillo's mom because she just seems like a very sad person a lot of stuff has happened in her life she's married to this guy he really wasn't in love with her was unfaithful picked this other lady over her and then she went and married this other guy which I know she loves Valen and had two children who both have been captured and it's just like 
a lot. But I'm glad her and Balan seem to have like this connection with Poppy to where like they like her and they are proud of her and they're glad that she's a part of their family because that's what, that's what Poppy really needs. She doesn't really have a lot. Like literally, oh my god, I'm I just think I just thought about Ian, her brother. We barely got to know the guy. I mean, we've literally heard about Ian for the first two books and how much Poppy misses him and how much she loves him. And then he gets his head chopped off. Like that whole entire scene, there is a lot to unpack there. And we will get into it once I get to the scene. Cause like I have like literally so many tabs that I'm going through and I keep getting off topic, but it's just because like so much stuff happened in this book. When we were having this conversation with Eloana, she was talking about how he was a great person when they first met, which I would love to know how they first met and also how she met Valen too, because I don't know if we've heard like their backstory a little bit or I'm just forgetting. She said, it was only towards the end that I started to see this stirring inside him, this great unrest that I came to believe even before what he'd done with his mistress was because he was becoming something else. And I'm just like wondering like, is this something like this stirring, this like great unrest, is this something that's gonna happen to Poppy? Because it just seems like as they get older, like these gods, like as they just keep living and stuff, like there's something that happens to them that means that they have to go to sleep or something. Most of the gods are asleep right now, including Nyctos now and his consort, which I wonder why like nobody knows her name as well because it says like we know that he had a consort but nobody knows what her name was like i wonder why like her name has been wiped from history there's so much history involving this book which i really enjoyed there was a lot of world building a lot of new characters it's a big world it's a big fantasy world and i love that i think um jennifer has built like a really creative and unique fantasy world and i love it but there was one thing that was like you know, it was kind of hard, and I know I don't know if it was just me, but it was like there would be scenes where we'd be having conversations with like other people, and it was like so much world building and so much like history was being like jammed, packed in like certain scenes, and it was like hard for me to take it all in and remember it. So like, there's a lot of stuff that I read that I probably have already forgotten because there's just so much. Like, there's so much history. It was sometimes hard to read because I didn't. I would have to go back and reread it because there, there's so many different like creatures, so many different like beings in this world. But one thing I do appreciate is when we are given this history and stuff, it's like through dialogue. So it's it's a little bit easier to read. Eloana also is like, she's kind of funny too. Like there was this one part where she was literally telling Poppy like, okay, well you have a choice whether you want to be the queen of Atlantia, but it's your birthright. And I understand that like in your life you haven't had a lot of choices, but frankly, I do not care. And Poppy's just like, oh, Okay, well, that really was blunt. And then we like talked to the king and like all these advisors and everything and about Poppy taking the throne because it really is her throne. It is her birthright. She could take it whether these people wanted to or not. But Castile, okay. This is the part where I was like, Castile, come on. We're talking to the king and his and Castile's mom and she's like, I understand your need to see your brother. I do, but this isn't just about you and your needs anymore. And then Castile cuts her off and he's like, that's where you're wrong. It is about her needs and they come first. And then his dad's like, son, I can respect your desire to care for your wife's needs, but the kingdom always comes first, whether you're the prince, prince or the king. Okay, so first off, I kind of agree with both of them. First off, I love that Castile is just like a really doting husband and he is literally a dream guy. He's so fictional, like no guy. I've never met a guy like this before in my life ever. And I probably never will. Castile is literally, he's got my heart if he was real. He has my heart even though he's fictional. And I love that he respects Poppy so much that he puts her needs and her choices first. Like he wants her to have a choice because her entire life, like she has not had a choice. But also I can understand the king being like, you are going to be king. You are the prince of Atlantia. You have to think about your people. Like I know like that is like the worst part about being in power is that like you have to sometimes set aside things that are important to you in order to better your people and the people that live in your land that you are in you are in control of then there's these new creatures now and they're called revenant which that just sounds scary like if they're killed they can come back to life if you chop one of their heads off it just grows right back i don't know how we're gonna defeat them really i mean like we do have little dragon things and they breathe the god's fire. I'm really excited to learn more about these little dragons because um, I just think it's really epic that we now have dragons in these books. But yeah, the revenants, like I'm assuming that they're not all evil. Like even though they have been trained obviously since birth to like do all this stuff, like I don't think they're all evil. Like that one revenant that we met that Isbeth basically um, 
killed in order to um, prove that this is a revenant and it's really hard to kill them that you really can't kill them there was something about the interaction in that room with that revenant that was just so weird but that girl she seemed to be really good she seemed to be very regretful and very like she didn't want to be doing this like she wanted to protect those innocent people from poppy i don't think that they're all bad i just think that like they just seem really, really scary because like you know they can't die even nikdos knew what the revenants was like he he was just like i'm sorry that you're having to go through all of this there's really not much i can say okay peace out bye have fun with that it has been three books and still there is a big big mystery surrounding poppy and her parents death I'm talking like obviously not her bio parents, but like, you know, the parents that took care of her when she was a kid. There is some new developments. There is another person there and we don't know, I don't know who he is. I don't know. He's like a shadow man. He was dressed like the dark one. Who do you guys think this is? I really don't know. I really love the scene where we went to look for Niktos where he was sleeping because I just love all those characters together and they're like on this journey. Like I just really love all these main characters that we have we have together. I'm really sad because I don't want any of them to die. I'm really hoping that Jennifer doesn't really kill off like the ones that we really love like Delano, Emil, uh, Vonetta, Kieran. Like please don't. Don't touch them, please don't. I mean, there's just so many characters I just love and I don't want to be killed. Emil has become one of my favorite characters. He's so funny. When they were like going through that those tunnels, he was just kept getting freaked out over everything. And then there was this one part where he's like, if this thing comes to life, and he was talking about the Draken, he was like, if this thing comes to life, I'm out of here. You will never see an Atlantean run faster. When we met with Niktos, he was, you know, he was kind of intimidating, but at the same time, Poppy wasn't really that intimidated by him. But he basically told her, like, there's really nothing I can do to help you. I'm sorry you're going through this, but you have the power inside of you. And he didn't just, like, outright say, like, you're my granddaughter. Like, you're literally a god. You you can take these Draken. Like, they are yours because you are my blood. He didn't outright say that, which, you know, honestly in books, like why don't they just outright say it? Like, come on, just tell me, tell me. Like we could have saved so much if you just told her, like you're actually my granddaughter. Um, these Draken are yours to control if you want. Go ahead, take them. I really wonder what Nichos thinks about his lineage. What, what, is going, what has been going on with his son? I wonder what he thinks about Malik and everything that is going on. Because you know that him and his consort, even though they're like asleep, they know the stuff that's been going on. So I just wonder what they know, if they do know the stuff that's been going on, and how they feel about their sons and everything that has gone down with their sons. And why they haven't felt the need to like wake up and like do something about it really. Cause it's like, if you think about it, like that's their children. So it's like, why wouldn't they want to go and help them and like do something about it? I just, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that I would love when the consort and Niktos wakes up at the same time. There's many questions that I have. I'm just like Poppy. Poppy asks so many questions, I swear. But I'm just like her. Like, I would love to have a sit-down conversation with a consort and Niktos and just, like, ask as many questions as I could because I have, I have a lot. A lot. Maybe not as much as Poppy, but a lot. We also met Gianna Davenwell, which we all know is um, the niece of... Alistair. She's cool, I guess, you know. I mean, Poppy really did threaten to tear her limb from limb, but she seems very regretful that her uncle did that, but honestly, I don't trust, I don't trust anyone in this book. I don't trust a lot that's going on in this book because authors are a master of deception. We've been deceived so many times in this series, so many times in this book, really. So I really don't trust anyone at this point. When we were going to meet with the Blood Crown to have this whole meeting, which just went to hell. We're going through these tunnels. We see this cat in this cage and he's like not in just like a normal like cage. It's like the bone cage that is made in order to hold a deity. The same cage that Poppy was in in the beginning of the book. And we see this cat and Poppy obviously goes up to it and it's like a big cat and she like touches it and then it turns into a, a man and he's like nude and he's like laying down on his stomach and just like really, really weak. And she, Poppy wants to save him. She wants to take him and they're, they're like, we can't deal with this right now, Poppy. Like, we just can't. <sighs> they said they're going to negotiate having him to come back with them. And we have this meeting and all this stuff happens. Malik, the brother of Castile. Okay. So he seems evil. He seems like he's on the Blood Crown side. I don't buy it. I don't. 
I don't. I really don't. Oh, it just seems like it just seems like it's too easy for him to be evil now. I think we had a couple of like reactions by him where Poppy could like see that he was moved by something like when the revenant was like about to be killed but obviously like she comes back to life he had a little bit of a reaction to that so i wonder if like he's involved with that girl if he's like fell in love like the only reason like he's acting like this is because he's in love with somebody and he's trying to save her i just feel like that might be a really good reason for him to be acting like the way he is and that that's the only reason why he's like pretending to be like he's on the side of isbeth when he's really not i don't buy it I think he's on our side. Felt really bad for Ian. Honestly, there was there was no reason for him to really die. And we barely got to know him, like I said before. He seemed like a great brother. Like, he tried to warn Poppy. Poppy has literally gone through so much in these books. She has lost so many people. And we still have three more books to go, guys. Like, Victor died. Tawny was taken away. But now we have Tawny back, which I'm really happy about that. But so much death and so much sadness has happened to poppy that just that one thing oh it was just heartbreaking like i really wanted her to get back with ian have ian come because it seemed like ian had a little thing for vanetta so we have that meeting and it just goes to hell castile gets captured and all this stuff happens then we leave and um Poppy wakes up and she's, you know, she's obviously really pissed off. Nobody thought about the cat guy, like the cat guy that was in the cage. But I just kept thinking, please, I know we're upset. I know Castile is gone, but like, can we please go back and get this cat guy? Because something in my book lover heart was just telling me we need this guy. Like for some reason, he's important. And there was no reason why he would be in a freaking cage like that. Like, why would you just walk past him? Come on, that is big. That is big. A guy in a cage that is supposed to be held by, like, is supposed to hold, like, a deity and a god. Come on. Like, why would he be there? We have to investigate. And they didn't want to investigate. And then they didn't even think about him when they left. And it was literally Poppy's father. The consort and Nikos had two sons, and they were twins. One of them was Malik. Another one was Iris. Iris? Iris. Iris is actually Poppy's dad. Where is Malik? You know, like, where is he? He's alive. We don't really know where he is. I'm so mad that we did not investigate and get that guy out of the cage. I, that's her dad. She looked him right in the eyes and was like, I promise he will be back for you. Promise not kept. Promise not kept, Poppy. Also, Isbeth is delusional because she thinks that she herself is a god. She thinks that just because Malik tried to ascend her and everything that, and she has like, you know, all these abilities, I guess, like that she is a god. But she's delusional. She's not a god because we learned in this book that gods cannot be ascended. They are born. So we had that on her. We are more powerful than her. Isbeth, she is our villain in this story. She has a lot of reasons to be a villain. And I, I have a feeling that Elowana is going to die at some point in this series because I feel like Isbeth is, literally this is personal for her. Like she wants, she's after Il Ilawana. She's not just after a crown. Like she's not just like after, you know, something to help the Ascended. Like she wants to kill Elowana and everything that she loves. And if Malik is still alive, why hasn't he tried to get with Isbeth again? There's so many questions. I am Poppy right now. I really am. It is revealed that Isbeth had a son. They said that Alistair killed the, the kid. I don't buy that either. I really don't like it might be true that he is dead but like I don't know if I buy that I really don't because honestly like why would we trust anything that Alistair says I have a feeling that that son is still alive somewhere and maybe Malik is with the kid because <gasps> he took the kid away oh my god what if guys what if what if he's out there raising his son and we have no idea because we have no idea where they are this is a thought that I got also when we were with the queen and the blood queen and she was talking about how you know poppy is her daughter and she was talking about her son how she just really just all she wanted was malik and her son to like go off and have a life together the thought that I had was what if Isabeth had actually raised poppy as her daughter and hadn't given her to Coralina and Poppy's dad to like raise her. Like what if Isbeth was actually the one that had raised Poppy? Like could you just imagine how Poppy would be? She'd probably be evil. We'd pro she probably would have married Malik and taken control of Atlantia. She'd be a totally different person. I just thought about that when I was reading it and I was like gosh like we're so lucky. Like she is lucky that she wasn't raised by Isbeth. So we go back to Nikdos' resting place in order to get the Draken because Poppy's like, you know, I got the power, so these Draken are mine. And we see this guy and he's a Draken. He's, okay, he's Nektos. I'm confused. So like, are the Draken, they're actually, they can, they have mortal forms. So this guy, Nektos, 
he is in his mortal form, which I just love. I love that they're dragon mortal forms. Like they're, I, I love that they're dragons, but they're also, they can be humans as well. So they have like a personality and I love that Kieran is like has like a little bit of a face off with the Draken a little bit. I would love to know more about the Draken and Nekdos and his daughter because he doesn't even know where his daughter is. And then at the very end of the book, Poppy goes, she kills King Jalara, cutting off his head, taking his crown and sending his head back with the Revenant and being like, this is my message. Like we literally have Drakens on our side. What do you guys got? Return Castile to me. Epic, epic scene. A little bloody, but epic. The entirety of this book is just epic. I was floored by everything that happened in this book, especially when we got to the end and it was so many things were revealed, like who Poppy's real father was, Ian being killed, you know, Malik actually being alive, Malik still being alive, and oh my gosh, just so many things. The consort and Nyctos, the Draken, oh my gosh. This book was so epic. I am, I can't believe I spent, I literally spent months not reading this book. Like, I can't believe this book has been out since, like, May, and I, I hadn't read it. Like, what was I thinking, guys? Procrastination. Procrastination. So happy that I finally finished it. I'm so excited to go read the book about Nikdos and Sarah, aka his consort. I am so excited about that story. The fourth book in the series comes out in March. Not even that long. Not even that long away. This is probably one of the best series that Jennifer L. Armachout has ever written. She's, she's so great. Like, she is an icon. She is a writer icon. Five out of five stars, obviously. I haven't said that yet, but like, obviously, this is a five out of five star book. I would love to know and hear all your guys' theories, all your guys' thoughts. Let's discuss them in the comments below because I'm sure, just like me, you guys have lots of questions and lots of things that you guys are, like, theorizing is one of my favorite parts about reading, like, a fantasy story like this. So, like, I love to hear your guys' theories. Let's discuss down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this review, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! <laughs>